Today I'm brewing Clone of the Vertical Epic from Stone, and this is their 10 10 10 edition. I first had this beer when it was released originally back in October 2010, but then I aged a bottle of it for about five years. The base of this beer is a Belgian strong ale that's brewed with chamomile, triacao, and amber candy syrup, and in the middle of fermentation, grape juice is added. The resulting beer is a strong and complex ale. And if you're new to the channel, this is Recipes with Ben, so let's get brewing. Now I'm aiming to make a 1.75 gallon batch in the end, so that means I'm going to start with 3.1 gallons of reverse osmosis water for the mash. I'm going to be following the instructions on Stone's website, but adapting it from my brewing setup specifically, and I'll link the full recipe down below. Then to get a dry and very fermented wort, I'm going to mash in at 148 degrees Fahrenheit. Now they recommend a whopping 105 minute mash which after brewing this beer, I think is completely unnecessary and a normal 60 minute mash is more than enough. As the mash water begins to heat up, I'm gonna add in some brewing salts and the exact numbers and quantities will be listed down in the description. Now for the grain bill, I'm gonna start with 80% pale malt and the original recipe calls for this tree cow, which is a flaked adjunct, but homebrew stores around me don't carry this. So to get a very similar kind of flavor profile, I'm going with 5% flaked wheat and 5% flaked rye. Now the last 10% for the original gravity is gonna be made up from the amber candy syrup, which I'll add at the boil. Now the mash is up to temperature, I'm gonna add in my mesh bag, because the homebrewing method I use is the brew in the bag method. Then I'm gonna add in the grain in a couple stages and mix it with a spoon to prevent any dough balls from forming when it's mixed with the water. Once all the grain has been added, I'm gonna take a small sample of the mash after about 10 minutes and sitting in the water to get the pH. I'm gonna adjust the pH with a little bit of lactic acid to drop the mash down to the desired range. For me, that was 5.4. After the total 105 minutes, I'm gonna raise the temperature up to 168 degrees for 10 minutes to do a mash out. Then at this point, I'm gonna move outside to finish the brew day. And I'm gonna pull the mesh bag from the brew kettle and place it over a second kettle to allow it to drain. I need to do a mini sparge at this point with about a half a gallon of water that's been heated to 170 degrees in my electric kettle. Then I'm going to rinse the grain and then finally to get as much sugar out as possible, I'm going to squeeze the grain in the bag. I then add all the liquid back into the brew kettle to get a total of 3.0 gallons of wort before we start the boil. Now it's time to crank up the heat to reach that boil, which is accomplished by setting the temperature on the kettle to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Then once the protein break has occurred, I'm going to add in the 0.58 pounds of amber candy syrup, and then accomplish this by turning off the heat source for any scorching from the sugar. When I'm adding sugar to the kettle, I typically like to add some of the hot wort to any of those alternative sugars, such as lactose, or in this case, candy syrup, and then mix it with the sugar and slowly add it back to the kettle. I'll try to actively stir the wort as I'm pouring in the sugary liquid, and make sure it doesn't drop to the bottom so it could burn at the bottom of the kettle. Then once all the syrup was added, I turn the heat back on to continue to boil. And at this point, this is when I'm gonna do my one and only hop addition, which is one ounce of Perle hops, which should give this beer around a 34 IBUs. And then I'm gonna boil for a total of 60 minutes. Now while this brew is boiling, it'll be watched by my very helpful brew pup. And then with 10 minutes left in the boil, I'm gonna add a half a whirl flock tablet and some yeast nutrient, and finally my wort chiller. The last kettle addition is gonna be 13.3 grams of chamomile flour which I'm gonna add after chilling the wort down to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit and let the chamomile steep for 15 minutes. I'll stir this every few minutes to kind of maximize the flavor, but if you have the ability to do a whirlpool, do that instead to really get out most of that chamomile flavor. In the end, I had 2.4 gallons of wort after a 60 minute boil, and I chilled the wort down to around 70 degrees, which is the right temperature for pitching yeast in this specific yeast strain. And then I took a sample and reserved that aside to get an original gravity. And now the target for this beer was originally 1.069, but I got something slightly higher of 1.072, which is close enough for me and my purposes. Since we're on the cold side now, I'm gonna spray down the ball valve with some star sand and attach a tube to it that had been dipped in star sand to aid in transferring the wort from the kettle to the fermenter. Which in my case, I'm gonna use a six gallon torpedo keg as a fermenter that has a floating dip tube inside. Now let's talk about the yeast for the specific recipe. The original recipe calls for Y yeast 3522 or Belgian Ardennes. So I'm gonna pitch a whole packet of yeast into the wort around 70 degrees, so I said. Then I put the lid back on top of the keg and sealed it shut. Then I'll add a blow-off tube after I aerate the wort by shaking it. Now for me, because I'm using a keg, the blow-off tube is just a long piece of tubing attached to a great quick connect that is then attached to the end gas post of the keg. The other end is then submerged into a jug filled with star sand, and I saw fermentation activities starting by that evening. 
After 48 hours, it was time to test the gravity and see where it was at and see if it was time to add some grape juice. Stone recommended adding the grape juice once the beer reached 1040. So for me, what I did was remove the blow off tube, attach a clean sanitized picnic tap to get a 200 mil sample. And the gravity at this point was a little bit lower than they suggested at 1030, but it was the best I could do given it only took 48 hours to reach this time. Tasting the wort at this point has a nice subtle honey sweetness and the spiciness kind of reminds me of cinnamon. Now it's time to talk about grape juice. And the original recipe calls for about 10% body volume, which is what I followed. But the four grape juices that their original recipe called for was 35% by volume Gavers Catrumer, 30% Muscal Canali, 20% Sauvignon Blanc, and 15% Riesling. I actually emailed Stone directly and asked them for recommendations on how to get these juices, and they referred me to the original vineyard, who didn't actually end responding in the end. So this left me with searching the internet until I found Castello de Amorso, who sells wine grape juice in 750 ml bottles. From them, I was able to secure two bottles of what I needed, which was Mescal Canali and Gewurz Terminer. They both came as 750 ml bottles. When I took a gravity reading of them, they were 14 bricks, and tasting a sample, they were quite sweet, but also very, very tasty at this point, with a lot of flavor. And I'll leave a link down below if you're interested in getting these bottles so you can try to make it yourself. Now, to add these to the fermenter, without really exposing it to auction, I poured the two bottles into a clean and separate keg. Then I sealed it up and purged it with CO2, and I did that three times to try to get out as much auction as possible. Then, to move it from the smaller keg to the fermenter that's acting as a keg, I added a couple PSI of pressure to the grape juice keg, attached a liquid to liquid jumper cable, and then used a blow off tube to allow the CO2 to escape as it was being filled with the grape juice. Then I let it continue to ferment in the basement, but after four days it was getting too cold for the strain of yeast. So I moved the keg in a bucket with some water and moved it back upstairs towards a lot to a warmer location in my house. After 19 days, I took a final gravity reading and it was 1.004. It says to reach terminal gravity. I decided it was time to transfer it to my keg for aging and serving. I will say the sample I took at this point to get a final gravity reading did have some like sulfury off notes, but that kind of dissipated over time and after spending a week in the keg, it was completely gone. I then pressurized the keg to 15 PSI and placed that in the fridge. And then I tasted it about once a week until it began to mellow out and the strong booze flavor had also started to subside. And here's the results after aging it for about six weeks in my fridge. So let's see how it tastes. All right, welcome to the end. This is my attempt at recreating Stone's Vertical Epic, the 10, 10, 10 edition. So this was a um, Belgian Golden Strong that was made with amber candy syrup. And then I added in two different types of grape juice uh, that were two of the four varieties that I could find and source. So right off the bat, the color really is dictated by the amber candy syrup that I added. It is pretty clear. It's cleared out a bunch since I let it condition in the actual keg. Uh, it's been conditioning now for about, I think, six weeks. Um, I let it ferment for three weeks, and then I transferred to a keg to let it, you know, age out. I do probably will say that the original beer itself was supposed to be aged for about two years. So hopefully in the future, I'll be able to bottle a couple of these from the keg and keep them and see how they taste or just keep in the keg and see how it tastes every month or so, and then kind of update you on some other social media stuff and let you know how it turns out, say like three, six months down the road. But right off the bat, had a nice little head when it was first poured. It does have a nice like boozy aroma. It's really coming from like the wine character. I will say the one weird note I did have when I kegged it was that it started to smell a little sulfury. And I thought there was almost something from the sulfites, but once it in, went to the keg and I let it condition for just a week, it was completely gone. And it's not here now. There's none of that sulfur smell. But yeah, you get like this sweet, really booziness, like almost from the maltiness as well on the aroma. Yeah, and it's very, very sweet, very young at this point. It's very boozy. I mean, I think at this, I don't exactly know how to calculate when you add in something halfway, like when I added the wine, because the, 
I want to add the juice from the grapes because that was at 14 bricks and I added two 750 ml bottles. But at that point, the gravity already dropped to like 10, 30 and it had started a little bit higher. So I don't know how to like calculate for that. So this beer is probably somewhere between nine and 10% alcohol. But overall, I mean, this is incredibly clear. There's no off flavors at this point. It's not spicy like you consider a Belgian. It's very like smooth. It's missing that like phenolic and estuary compounds. I don't really get any of the chamomile at this point, um, but compared to everything else in it, it probably would mellow out over time anyways. But I do get the predominant like grape character and wine character. It almost reminds me more of like a barley wine or like something like that, like a very high booze content uh, barley wine where it's not super malty, but is that like sweetness and booziness from it. The whole story with the 10, 10, 10 that I saved was when I started graduate school, I moved to California and I found the first bottle I'd ever seen of this whole series, but it had been going since 2002. And so I grabbed one and I really, really liked it. And it was really good because it was young at that point. And, you know, it was in October. Um, I drank it pretty much as soon as I bought it. And so I was like, oh, well, it says it's supposed to age. So I went back and bought a bottle and then just like buried in the back of my closet with much other beer. And then finally opened it at the end of graduate school. So I've been aged for five years and it was phenomenal. I didn't really do anything special to it for aging. It wasn't like it kept in the fridge the whole time or anything. But at the end, it turned out really well. And that was the whole thing with that series that those beers were supposed to be get better year after year. Since then, I did have like, I think I still have one bottle of an 11, 11, 11, which would be almost 10 years old now. And I have no idea how it is. I'd like to try it in the future. Um, and I did have the 12, 12, 12. And the, on Stone's website, they do have all the recipe breakdowns for every single one of them. So if you're interested in looking back at any of those beers, because each of them is kind of a twist on the Golden Strong and other kind of Belgian y inspired beers. Uh, but I think. The instructions are pretty straightforward. Sourcing the material is a little hard. I couldn't find the triacal, which is one of the flaked adjuncts they added. So that's why I did like half flaked wheat and half um, flaked rye to kind of get that character. And so if I ever made this again, probably would do that. Um, and I'm not sure if I would make it with the wine again because it definitely adds its own character. And the beer did taste very, very good about right before I added it, I tried it and it was amazing. It was like this nice spiciness, had a lot of character of what you would imagine with a Belgian. Um, and so just doing a Belgian with chamomile would be really nice to think in the future. But overall, I think this beer will only get better with time. That's the whole point of this beer. Uh, I'll let you know if I try it again in the future, I'll drop a short video tasting how it is. If you made it this far, thank you so much. And please consider subscribing if you're new to the channel so you can get other content just like this. And I'll see you again in the future. Cheers.